Welcome, I'll be reviewing Star Trek Strange New Worlds, Season 1, Episode 7. These are just my running thoughts as I was watching the episode. When we first saw T'Pring, I figured she would be a very occasional guest every now and then, but she's basically become a member of the main cast, and I'm here for that. I absolutely love her actress so far. Plus, now she got to make her own personal log. You have truly made it as a Star Trek character when you get to do that. It was intriguing getting to see what the rehabilitation center was doing with the very physical forms of meditation, like the Zen gardening. That's always fascinated me when they're raking through those pebbles like that. I got to see a huge one being worked on at the Portland Japanese gardens one time, and it was amazing the way they were spiraling everything and then had to step in particular patterns or they'd have to start over. Poor Spock. He had his Cabernet Sauvignon glass. He was set for a logical, calm evening. And then T'Pring hits him with a conversation about human sexuality. That was just adorable. He practically spit his wine out. You could tell that these two were having trouble with their long distance relationship though. And I like that they're showing that struggle. And this meant the Chapel-Spock friendship got to shine again. Don't be smarter than the truth. Wise words from Chapel there. Can we get an advice column? The Enterprise crew could write in anonymously and Nurse Chapel could write back to them. That would be so much fun. Can you imagine? Dear Nurse Chapel, I've been on three dates now and all he talks about is astrophysics. Signed, Pining on deck 11. Dr. Aspen was intriguing with their casual semi-punk style going on, not to mention pirates. Yes. Unfortunately, this is where the music finally let us down. They clearly were playing, don't trust them, this is a villain music, whenever Dr. Aspen appeared. They even zoomed in on the counselor, while playing the creepy music. And I was like, oh, well, they're a villain. Okay, that's obvious. And then they kept going on about, you've got to steer clear of the pirates. Whatever you do, don't engage with them. And I'm like, what is your motive here? Who are you? Had there been any actual colonists, they would have been lucky to have Pike on their side because he went right after them zero hesitation, didn't worry about the fallout. He's all about saving people. Unfortunately, that extremely good attribute was used as a form of manipulation in this situation. Spock's little eyebrow raise when he heard the clubbing music thumping through the door was so well done. It's fun to see how the most subtle movement from a Vulcan character is immediately effective, at least for me. No overacting is needed, just a simple. And they keep drawing attention to their necklace. What's going on with that? I don't think it's a real necklace. They're being super obvious about this. What is it really? Is it a tracking beacon? The director here needed to trust the audience more because I'm extremely suspicious already, thanks to the music. And then you zoom in on the necklace and I'm like, Something's going on. How close do you want to get? First date or third date? Blind date. Ortegas is the best. Her character is just so great to have around. I am, however, concerned that she is becoming the comic relief, and there's nothing wrong with that. I just hope we get a little bit more substance from her character soon. Maybe her own episode. So far, she kind of shows up does a few quips in a kind of James Bond way and then kind of exits. And you're just like, whoa, I was just in the presence of the coolest person on the ship, but now she's gone. I loved it later as well when she was doing manual piloting and she was just so into it and just zoned in. Like chaos was erupting around her and she was just like. Have you ever been like that at work where you're doing a really complicated project and just everyone behind you is doing random stuff and you're just doing your spreadsheet really carefully. 
old school style Star Trek effects just streamlined a bit. I could totally see this happening in the original series. I cannot explain how happy this made me. Thank you for understanding that we like to see original Trek. I mean, we get it with number one's hairstyles. Now we're getting it with this. Just thank you. And it was at this point when I wondered, what if the pirates are not after the colonists? They seem to be after something on the Enterprise or maybe the Enterprise herself. Probably the Enterprise. Watching Spock absolutely panicking when asked to make a gut decision was so hilarious. You could see the look on his face like, I don't have enough data. I cannot make a logical decision. And Pike's like, just pick one. And he's like... <laughs> and then the counselor noticed it and they followed him to his quarters and were like, okay, <laughs> this is a problem. We cannot have you having a meltdown on the bridge whenever you're asked to make an emotional decision. And despite what came out later, I think they had really good advice. As he kept going back and forth of, am I human? Am I Vulcan? I think I'm more Vulcan. I was raised on Vulcan. And having this just drama queen moment, they were like, maybe you're neither. Maybe you're something different and just need to figure out what that is. Stop obsessing because he kept trying to put himself into a box. Am I in the human box or the Vulcan box? And the counselor was like, maybe get rid of the boxes. I really appreciated that number one pointed out how Pike was being a bit reckless, heading up an away mission into a clearly combat situation where they knew they would be outnumbered. She didn't make a fuss about it. She was just like, is this really a good idea? Have you thought this through? And he was like, yeah, I'm good. And she respected that. I really think that Pike should have stayed with the Enterprise and Una should have gone, partly because we know she has enhanced combat capabilities. Might as well put that to use. All right, Nurse Chapel leaping into the Jeffrey's tubes to avoid pirates is the content I wanted. I didn't know it, but I needed this. And Spock really went for it when defending the bridge. I lost track of how many people he took down with the Vulcan neck pinch. Just like leap. Boom. Oh, that was beautiful. Great fight choreography there. And Pike offering to cook dinner after being taken prisoner. Not the tactic I expected, but I kind of wonder if it would work. Because he's basically Cisco in that he's a really good cook and a people person. And I feel like that combination is going to serve him well, much better than the traditional let's fight back as prisoners. All right, this is getting even better. Nurse Chapel versus Pirates. Yes, Queen. And here we go with Pike again, leaning into his strengths, cooking and getting people to like him with his amazing hair. I can't believe they even found him a little apron. And the whole time he was casually splitting the captain and the crew, the way he was giving those little subtle, hey, you know, you shouldn't let your crew talk to you like that. And then five minutes later, he's over at the crew going, why do you put up with that guy? Like, he doesn't even cook well. Brilliant move, deciding to just quietly start a mutiny. And it looks like I was right with the warning music. They are officially evil. No, I was just warming up to the character with all their stories about the Vulcan husband and everything and the sweet tattoo they have and the great advice they were giving. I will say Captain Angel is an awesome pirate name. And at this point, I didn't know it wasn't actually the counselor. I figured it was the counselor who turned pirate. And I was like, Captain Angel is the perfect name for that, right? Of course, it turns out later, totally different person. I actually kind of wish that they had gone with the storyline if it was a counselor who decided to become a pirate. I feel like that would have been more interesting. Also, I'm kind of imagining Counselor Troy in a little pirate outfit now. We got that. Kind of, when she had her little 18th century naval uniform on. And can you imagine the show 
if the pirate captain used to be a counselor, they take over a ship, they take out the crew, they get back on board their vessel and, all right, does anyone need to talk about this? Anyone having any feelings about the raid we just did? Come to my office for an hour. I should have known when they put on that gorgeous I am a villain costume. That black lace was so obvious. I was like, no, no, they wouldn't. Indeed, they did. I loved that outfit, though. And what a twist that Captain Angel just wanted their Vulcan back. No interest in the Enterprise, really. And they set all of it up in that opening scene with T'Pring. But I got so caught up in everything going on that I kind of forgot about that. And oh my, what a cruel move on Spock's part to pretend he and Nurse Chapel were having an affair. But I guess T'Pring is Vulcan. She can handle that. And I really don't think she believed it. I think she realized what Spock was doing as an excuse to break their bond and then get her off the hook with the prisoner exchange. Random observation. Did you see that therapeutic art class going on behind T'Pring in the background? I think being a guard at this rehabilitation center is added to my list of dream Star Trek jobs. And then, yes, the necklace was a site-to-site transporter. I knew there was something off about it. Plus, this means we can see Captain Angel in the future, and they're such a cool character. I am glad that they kind of left that out there as a possibility. And then this whole episode brought us to Captain Pike's dad jokes with Talk Like a Pirate Day when he got back to the Enterprise and was like, Army mateys! (laughs) That was worth watching the whole episode for it, just that dad joke. It was <laughs> There was one loose thread point I wish they had resolved, which is, where is the real counselor? Are they still on some uninhabited planet somewhere, just wandering around? Did we pick them up? Did we get them home? Like, what happened there? I would have appreciated a throwaway line or something. It looks like my confidence in T'Pring was correct. She knew exactly what was going on and understood Spock's motivation. Can we talk about that final scene? Because we have canonical Spock's brother. The fans have been talking about this for years now, going, okay, Michael's nice, but we're getting no mentions. What's going on here? And it looks like they finally listened to us. We are getting the Cybok plotline. I am so excited about this. I can't even explain it. I have wanted to know more about him for a long time. I think all we got was that one movie, right? And did, was he in TAS? I forget. There was one episode with young Spock. I can't remember if Cybok was mentioned. I don't think the next episode will be about it, but maybe. I feel like they're going to tease this a little bit longer and then maybe the finale of season one we get Cybok 